Okay. Um, okay, welcome. The Mount Lake Terrace Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Commission meeting, February 21st. And if we can do call to order and a roll call by Carolyn Hope. Sure. Uh, Council uh, Commissioner Matsuda. Here. Present. Commissioner Francisco. Here. Commissioner Courtney. Here. Chair Page. Here. Present. And Councilmember Murray. Present. And um, both Vice Chair Ona and Commissioner Avio have asked to be excused. And I get a motion to excuse um, the two from um, the meeting today. I move that we excuse Commissioner Avio and Commissioner Murray. Yeah, I second. All right, it's been moved and second. All in favor? All right. Okay. Thank you. Um, do we have anybody on for public comments? No. We don't. <laughs> and I should, if I could just interject, we are doing online registration for public comments because we um, had some disruptful and hateful comments at city council. So um, there's messages on our website about how to register through the commission or board liaison or the council clerk for the council meetings. Um, in person, of course, is um, as usual, but um, we're trying to do our best to mm -hmm. prohibit that kind of activity. Well, I'll read the I'll read it so that it's in the minutes. No per public comments. No person shall make personal attacks or threatening remarks while addressing council, the commission, the committee, the advisory group which disrupts, disturbs, or otherwise impedes the orderly conduct of the meeting. Any person who is engaging in conduct that disturbs, disrupts, or impedes the business of the council, the commission, the committee, the advisory group, or whose comments have been ruled out of order by the presiding officer shall immediately cease and refrain from further improper comments or inappropriate conduct. All hate speech will be construed as threatening remarks. Okay. The... Um, if I can get a motion for approval of December 2023 minutes as well as the January 2024 meeting minutes, which we'll second soon. I move to approve December 2023. and that January is canceled. Mm -hmm. uh, January, we did do minutes from our retreat, oh. but they're just like a okay. paragraph. If you want me to, I can pull them up. Great. There was a motion on the floor. Can I second? Second. All right. So moved. All right. So we're going to get right to our speakers. And I'm going to let Scott introduce them since Scott is involved in getting our speakers here. Um, from the city of Shoreline, uh, people who are have been at this longer uh, than, than we have. And I thought this would be a, a great time to learn from, from other uh, cities about, about what they're doing. Um, says thank you very much for, for, for joining us. I didn't know you were going to be here. I thought you were. Surprise. Yeah. But thank you for, for coming to join us as, as well. So um, tell us about uh, City of Shore and what you're up to. Thank you. Um, so thank you, Scott, for um, reaching out to me. Uh, so my name is Judy Fulton. I work for Utopia Shoreline in the Community Services Department. And uh, I am the Equity and Social Justice Program Coordinator and I to provide community support. Um, and so I wanted to give some background about how the Shoreline has um, been doing through this work, and then Constance is our community opportunity coordinator, and she'll speak more about specific programs um, to connect with the community. But I'm going to go through fairly quickly. I have a full agenda, but if there's particular pieces um, that you want to ask more, we can you know, always talk at another time. Um, so my role was a new role created in um, in kind of when our human services planner retired. And so our community uh, the part our community services manager took the opportunity to take that planner position and have a focus on diversity and inclusion. And so this is a great example of, of how one person can make kind of a big impact and or you know a big change within their 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 scope. 
Um, and so when I came on, um, it was kind of a blank slate because it's again a new position, and the city as a whole hadn't been doing um, sort of over uh, overall uh, work in this area. So when I came on, um, I thought about how, and I used to work for the city of Seattle uh, in human services. So the race and social justice initiative that the city of Seattle had been working through for many years, kind of some of the founding of, of what I brought to Shoreline. Um, you might be familiar with some of the city of Seattle's work. Um, so looking internally, what sort of uh, support we needed as staff um, and departments, um, and and because there hadn't been sort of overarching uh, training, that was a big obvious need. And then also looking at the needs of our different departments and programs, how could we support um, our city services in reaching um, and being reflective of our diverse community? And then also how do we support community-led uh, community-driven uh, initiatives and, and interests? So, these are some examples. When I first came on board, the city didn't have um, on-demand interpretation, which is a pretty um, standard and easy uh, resource to, to available so that folks who may not be comfortable speaking English but were able to dial an interpreter. Um, so we're able to get that um, uh, online pretty quickly. Um, some of the different programs and, and support that we've provided over the years include um, uh, working with community members to give um, educational opportunities to learn more about different groups. So one uh, program that's on our city's YouTube page is a, about the history of the Duwamish in the Shoreline area. It's a nice video and it was um, co uh, kind of led by a longtime Shoreline resident who is a member of the Duwamish tribe. And we've also um, partnered with um, or contracted with People's Institute for Survival and Beyond, which does an undoing racism training in been in this area for 30 years. They're based in New Orleans and they have a really comprehensive approach to understanding institutional racism. And I really uh, uh, really appreciate that, that that training. It's a two-day training and it's been happening. Um, in this area for, like I said, 30 years. So it's a nice foundation and also one that others are familiar with. Uh, so we've been able to provide that for staff and community members. And then, like I said, supporting uh, our resident-driven efforts. Um, we have an organization called United Shoreline Organized Against Racism, USOR, and it was led, um, created by residents in the city staff or trainers have tried to support what they're interested in and how, how can we partner uh, with our community to advance the principles around anti-racism and equity diversity. Just kind of those three areas. And I, I have, you know, that partial hat there because uh, my position is only 0.6. <laughs> um, and so it's trying to do a lot with limited resource. Um, so, oops, um, just to get some timeline, as I mentioned, I was hired in 2016, and we, um, the first step was, was trying to get a sense of the organization. So at the time, the city was around 150 employees, and I didn't know, you know, what kind of the climate or the, the sense um, engagement, and so we had a consultant do some focus groups and uh, kind of a quick and dirty survey around what kind of training needs um, uh, were there and what people were interested in. And then in the spring, after doing that initial work, we had a um, committee formed that would help us develop and select the trainers for our all staff training. And then that all staff training, um, you know, we went through a lot of um, a lot of process, like helping our managers and supervisors be prepared for how to talk about it and uh, and work with their staff to understand the importance of it. We had a pilot of the training and then also, um, because it was mandatory, had multiple sessions. I think we ended up having five sessions over three months so that we could, because we're a small city, have, we could um, have, have uh, time for different departments to go through um, and then after that, at the end of that workshop, 
um, one of the exercises was asking every employee, how did they think that the city of Shoreline could support equity and diversity? And all those responses were collected and, and kind of um, categorized. And then we, from those responses, we would have 30 work groups. So these work groups um, are, you know, we can see the topic, outreach and community engagement, human resources and staff support, and the efforts around policies and procedures. And so everyone who's on the committee would pick a work group to participate in. And then if the work groups gave space for folks who didn't, um, who weren't on the whole committee, but for when it, they were thinking they were more project focused, they could come on to a work group and focus on a particular um, element that 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 work group was focused on at the time. And then we also have um, this happened in COVID time. Um, we have a drop in discussion twice twice a month, the first and third Thursdays, and it's online. And it's for anyone who wants to come in, share a resource, or ask for advice, or just you know connect with others on this topic. Maybe they don't have other folks that they. Um, regularly connect with. And so just trying to get some different options for staff to engage uh, in the work in, 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 in whatever level they're comfortable with. But in our training, I'd say, you know, this how, how, what you get out of it is what you put into it. And, and everyone has a different point. And so whatever it is, you know, we want to support you in engaging. And one thing I wanted to share as we uh, so after that initial foundation training, um, one uh, key topic is around implicit bias because, you know, as well-intentioned, you know, kind-hearted, good people, sometimes it's really challenging to think about how folks can be maintaining and sustaining um, inequitable policies and procedures. And so thinking about how implicit bias in the brain works it helps folks um, kind of think about it in a way that doesn't feel like blaming or guilt, but just understanding uh, and being able to um, think about both their work and their impact in a different way. So we worked with a consultant from City of Renton, Benita Horn, who um, actually is now the equity consultant for um, the Association of Washington Cities. And I really appreciated her model that she was doing at Renton at the time where uh, leadership staff co-led the implicit bias training. So we did that at Shoreline. She came and it's a half day training. Um, and, you know, as the teacher learns as much as the student or maybe more in preparation. So it was a really good opportunity for our staff to, um, to increase their skills and also just, you know, um, not just with this topic, but also just, um, thinking about their, their work in a different way. Um, so that, that was a, a big push and I think something that we'll, we'll wanna do again. We've had a lot of staff uh, turnover and a lot of organizations have had. Um, and then um, I'm gonna talk a little bit more, but some of you may be familiar with the Governmental Alliance on Race and Equity here. Mm -hmm. um, so at the time they were doing a Northwest Learning Cohort uh, so many municipalities and public um, entities were part of that in the June 2019 to February 2020 timeframe. And so we have some staff who participated. City of Linwood had a group of like, 10 folks. So that's again, another regional effort that um, as you're you know, thinking about things to, to plug into, um, that you'll be interested in. Um, and then another, as I mentioned, the People's Institute uh, for Survival and Beyond, uh, their undoing racism workshops where we went moving from the foundation training and the implicit bias training and continuing to um, help folks and uh, think about uh, institutions and how systems interact. So many people, many folks on staff also went through that training and community members. Um, and then you might see a little gap <laughs> between 2020 through 2022, uh, as you may imagine, um, and you have been probably, we're a little bit, 
redirected on our, our focus. So some things were, have been paused um, during you know the the, the main um, response to to COVID. Um, and so in 2023, last year, long time ago, um, part of all the staff training uh, was was um, being transitioned into our HR department. As I mentioned, I'm in community services, and so it makes more sense for overarching staff training to be out within our HR and organizational development department. Um, and so that's this piece around as your organization, as our organization grows and develops, you think about how this is organized in a, in a better way. So there's some pieces that are still moving right now. Um, and so because we had such a long break, we, and a lot of staff changing, we um, recently, we just finished doing another round of um, all staff mandatory training, and we worked with Cultures Connecting, Elsa Clavon and Caprice Collins, Dr. Collins, um, who are amazing, very well known in this area. Um, uh, so now we're kind of in the place again of reforming our um, our uh, employee staff committee and our work groups. Um, and oops, back here. So. Care um, has this kind of model for institutional change in these three kind of areas of normalize, which is um, having a shared analysis and definitions and a sense of urgency around this work, uh, organize and creating the internal infrastructure and partnerships um, necessary to help support the work. So as I mentioned, when my position was created, it was we repurposed from a human services planner, so it's an example of organization. And then operationalizing, how are we actually changing the work that we're doing, um, whether it's uh, different sort of tools to analyze our outcomes or looking for different data that we haven't collected. And even though there's kind of this arrow, uh, it's not necessarily a linear process uh, because you know, as you as I said, like now yeah, we're we're in this new new time of restructuring. So um, normalizing all the training and the um, the uh, conversation and making this a normal part of our work, um, then sort of pushes us to the next stage of like how are we implementing things and we're asking for tools. Um, so we can, like I said, not necessarily linear, but it can go all over. But, and then for sure, looking at the different levels on an individual basis, our interpersonal relationships and how um, racism, diversity, inclusion, how that shows up in those cases. And our, our cities are all made up of people. So how are we implementing that work in, in our institution? And how are we working with systems structurally? Um, so just, and as I said, I want to make sure it's time for um, Constance to share. But um, one of the things that is really key, and I have a little summary slide as well, but is having leadership that is very visible uh, around this work. And so um, that I, when I was new to the city, even though um, I was a little bit um, nervous about how things would be received, it was really helpful that, that our city manager, uh, Debbie Terry at the time, was completely 100% supportive. And so, um, and also our council. And two, two examples that our council has taken action is um, our resolution 401, which declares the city of Shoreline to be inviting equitable and safe community for all. They adopted that in January of 2017, which is kind of a pivotal time. Um, <laughs> Uh, and although it didn't actually change the way the city of Sherman was doing anything, it was explicitly stating that we don't inquire around uh, an individual's immigrant immigration status or documentation. And then at that time, that was a very key message um, that, that we wanted to, ship, uh, to convey to our community. Um, and then in November 2020, resolution 
467 was adopted by uh, Shoreline City Council, which was declaring um, our commitment as a city to build an anti racist community. And it has a lot of, you know, obviously, after the murder of George Floyd, um, a lot of thoughtful, high level commitments around how we as an organization think about racism and our role. Um, we talked this talk about building our organizational capacity, um, hiring practices and training. It talks about uh, working with community um, and listening to uh, their needs, also around uh, hate crimes and supporting development policies. But it's helpful as we, again, move forward that we can refer back to the city policy uh, council resolutions. This is something that our council thinks is important and it continues to be included in our council goals. Um, so, yeah, just like in a nutshell, I think you all know this, but um, I, I had recently talked with another group and they're, they're asking for, for what I thought were some of the key things. And one is that it's never done, which I think you all know, it's ongoing process. And the process is as important as the end point, how, how we get there, how we can build relationships internally and externally is key. Um, how are we prioritizing this work? Uh, do we have the resources um, to participate and to lead this work? And are we addressing the multiple layers as I mentioned in the care slide? Um, because sometimes we focus very much on the individual, which makes a lot of sense. But also there's, you know, as city staff serving the whole community, how do we go from there? Um, as I mentioned before, how does our leadership show um, their support uh, for this work? But also that everyone has a role and that we are all um, gatekeepers at some point, that we control access to resources, information, um, and uh, you know, opportunity. And so how, how do we, and as you all as commissioners, um, how do you um, support that? So, thank you. Thank you. Um, this is really exciting for me, actually, because a few years ago, it wouldn't have made sense for us to speak together with, with you. The job I was hired for was very much focused on a very specific part of Shoreline's work with community, and that is supporting the 14 neighborhoods that um, were defined when the city was founded in 1995. Resolution 54 was one of the first um, resolutions, you can tell by the <laughs> low number, um, to support, there were, there were 14 distinct areas in Shoreline that had been functioning in some way or another as, as groups for a long time. One of them over a hundred years, um, it really was very well established and others, had to had to find themselves around their elementary schools. So when you come through Shoreline and you see signs saying you are in whatever neighborhood, generally there is a school associated with that or something that that kind of brought people together. Um, the council really wanted to continue to support them with staff, with city funding, um, with as much as they could on the ground level to help them succeed in in working with, with neighbors. I mean, that was the whole idea was to really bring people together. Um, the city supported a, a group that came together out of that, of the Council of Neighborhoods, which was elected positions from each neighborhood association to participate in a monthly meeting and learn about the city. It was very, um, a lot of access for the folks who were part of that. And it was a very small group. So um, that's something that we wanted to look at as we started to realize that given the resolution, it might be time to really look at, at how we could better serve the whole community and not just the 14 distinct neighborhoods. Even prior to the pandemic, many neighborhood associations were really struggling. They couldn't pull, they couldn't keep their boards together. Um, they weren't getting as much support as they had in the past. When I came on um, in, in 2015, 
the first thing that was really clear to me was the really stark differences between neighborhoods where there were wealthier residents who could afford to pay dues, could really support things in their neighborhood compared to other places where you might have parents working multiple jobs, couldn't be involved in their neighborhood association. And as often happens, the people who had been leaders the longest, generally white retired folks who, whose work has been wonderful. I, I don't want to ever uh, say that they haven't thought about community because they have. But as Shoreline really has changed, the neighborhoods really needed to change as well. And we, we went through a period of giving them opportunities to learn a little bit more about equity and social justice, just we're not getting quite the traction that we wanted. And so we hired a consultant. I don't know if any of you um, have ever worked with Courtney Wooten, who is from Suburbia Rising. And she had done a workshop that Sumi and I worked together on for not just neighborhood associations, but for the whole, for PTSA and anybody who, or their, their leadership council, people who wanted to come together to learn about radical welcoming. And it, it was just like, when we started to think about what could happen, I knew we needed that kind of focus. And so luckily had a lot of support, not just <laughs> from our immediate um, supervisors, but all the way up into the city manager's office to take a look. We started with a survey to kind of figure out where neighborhoods were. Um, in order to be incorporated, they have to clear several high bars. Um, they have to have a working board. They have to be registered as a nonprofit with the state. They have to have standing with the IRS. It's pretty hard if you're in a small neighborhood that doesn't meet regularly. So one of the first things that we realized is that we needed to offer them some alternatives if they didn't want to work with Robert's Rules of Order and have you know really structured meetings, but still wanted to be out in the community, we decided at that point we wanted to continue to support them. And we have continued to support the other um, associations as well. Um, so we worked with Courtney. She conducted um, many one-on-one -on -one interviews with people who have been involved in the city for a long time, but also people who had not felt welcomed into their neighborhood associations. They may have dipped their toes in and didn't really feel like it was the place for them. So we needed to understand more about that. Um, we proposed the structural changes, as I said, and have started to reallocate city resources to support more of the community. Our goal to continue supporting neighborhood associations is really focused on connecting with our changing community not just keeping things static. We continue to fund, um, we have funding for events. We continue to offer neighborhood mini grants. This last year, we required that they have a partnership element, which they never had before. So uh, a few of our neighborhoods last year partnered with other neighborhood associations, but also really started reaching out more into the community. One of our ongoing, very popular Halloween events that the Richmond Beach Community Association does. Um, they actually moved ahead and partnered with a couple of groups that work with um, adults and young people with disabilities to be able to create a better space for them. So that was a partnership that we were really excited about. They've been moving in that direction and this just was the nudge to keep going. Um, and we continue to have regular trainings for just not, not just the neighborhood associations, but for community um, leaders as well. We started the year, I'll talk a little bit about a new program that we're doing. We started the year with the Arc of King County coming in to do a program called um, Disability is Diversity that was wonderful. I mean, we, Sydney and I both enjoyed it greatly and I think people who participated did as well. It was very straightforward and people couldn't hide from the information they were getting. They, they were online, of course, again, but um, it was really, it was great. And so we will follow that up actually this May or this April with a panel and workshop on creating um, events that are truly accessible to as many people in the community as possible. So we'll be looking at all kinds of disability and not just the messaging that lets people know that they're invited, but some of the activities, some of the uh, physical access 
A couple of things that we've done um, since I've been on board, and I'm really pleased to have been invited to, to create or co-create these. We wanted to create some opportunities for people to learn about the city and to engage on that level. We did city-wise, we piloted it in 2017, and that is our version of a city academy. Um, it, a lot of times, citizens' academies are police-based. Ours includes the police, but that's not the focus. It's, it's all different departments. It's an eight-week committed dive into really focusing on how the city works and what services we provide. We got, um, as of last year, we had 137 graduates, and one of them is a council member now who was in the first city wise and is like, I decided to do this because of this. So that's been really exciting. And people on commissions and boards as well. What we decided to do with the council of neighborhood meetings, which as I mentioned, had very few attendees. Um, it, it technically was open to the public, but people didn't feel very welcome walking in to a room where you've got people who've been in, in relationships for a long, long time and don't necessarily um, open, open the doors very easily. So rather than doing council of neighborhood meetings, we are doing monthly meetings called City Learn. Um, these are very rich meetings focused on topics, either with city staff. It starts with a council member doing council update, and then city staff or partners have an opportunity to really dive deeply for an, almost an hour and a half into a topic of interest. And um, those have been, we started this in September. There was pushback for sure. Neighborhood people are still coming, which we are grateful for and really encourage. But by making it hybrid, a lot of people who would never feel comfortable or hadn't felt comfortable walking into City Hall can participate. And we are able to kind of funnel questions to the presenters in a way that feels much more um, inclusive. Um, there are other opportunities for people to get together. National Night Out is obviously one that many cities have. Um, after the pandemic, we really decided to refocus it. And instead of calling it National Night Out Against Crime, we really wanted it to be National Night Out for Community. And since we actually program this, I work with the police and fire, but it comes from the Community Services Division, we can craft that message. And I'm, I'm not sure it makes a difference, except that I think somewhere it does. I mean, police can still go out and talk to people, but I think people have an idea, especially at the pandemic, how important it is for them to connect. And we, uh, we tried to support that during the pandemic by creating a handout that was um, like a neighborhood talent bank where people could start actually talking to their neighbors in a different way. It wasn't structured like the state's program. It was much, it was a much easier, more friendly way to get out and meet people. And we also put together guidelines for people who wanted their night outs to be more inclusive, how to invite people who may not speak English, how to provide um, amenities for people or accessibility for people who may not have access otherwise. Again, no idea, we can't really measure, but it's been out there and we have gotten a good feedback. Oh, we also, last year, really started to focus more on involving apartment buildings. Uh, we are, I mean, I, you all are experiencing this too. It's shoreline has gone from being single resident homes primarily, and those homes are really close to being outnumbered. By, by people living in apartments. And um, it's a different kind of, you, you don't go to apartment buildings necessarily and advertise that you are doing an ice cream social if you're a neighborhood association. Ideally, you go and start talking to people and find out what they would like to do. And we did that with National and Out last year with one of the biggest apartment complexes, uh, King County Housing Authority and Ballinger Commons. And they had an amazing evening. Um, they invited King County Library System to come and give away books. 
They had opportunities for people to talk to the fire department. It was it was a very successful evening, and that is going to be the focus, I think, coming in the coming years is really involving more people in that. And then finally, I'm going to talk a little bit about a grant. I mentioned, oops, go back here. I talked about many grants, which we continue to do for neighborhoods, but people in the community, in groups, have never had a way to access city funding. We didn't really have a mechanism for it. And we really wanted to change that. So we created the Lugger Community Grant, which we worked on, Sunni and I worked on for months, and we launched it in February 2020. Mm -hmm. So this was really, we really saw it supporting events, trainings, nothing like that kind of thing. So that the first couple of years got a pretty slow start, but we still had people who expressed interest and we had um, an East African youth group be able to make a video with a videographer to show elders in the community how to use their masks and how to protect themselves from COVID. Um, there, there were things that popped up that people wanted to do one woman who lived, um, who had done natural and out for years was like, well, we can't do that, but we want to do something. So we want to do a little free library and we really want it to be just for books around equity. And they they hired an artist. They, they got a, a small grant from us, hired an artist, did this amazing little free library with images of African American authors on it and filled it with nothing but books, particularly for kids, introducing them to, to other, other voices. This year, we're really hoping to amp up more. Um, we, we still have funding for this. Last summer, we were able to support a couple of events that one was a disability event for families of people who are in a program through Ventura Disability Partners. We supported the Gambian um, Association of, of, of Seattle in a huge soccer event that they have every summer in one of the Shoreline Parks. Um, it's word of mouth and we, we rely on community reviewers to look at the applications. So it's it really is very much based in the community. It's people can only get a thousand dollars at this point, but the bar is is pretty low in terms of what they have to do to get the grant. It's not like going through the contortions you would have to do to get like a mini grant. And Sumi and I work with people to make sure that their applications are clear before they go to the reviewers and stand a chance or will, will most likely be successful. So that's where we are. And I think that this is just an example of how staff can take something like the resolution and, and figure out how it works in their own in their own little piece of the world. So it's been exciting to, to do this. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Any questions, what? comments? Well, Sitting with this, I'd, I'd have a lot of questions after a while, well, and I'd have to sit with it and, and talk to you for a little bit. But uh, thank you very much. This has really piqued my interest in what uh, what we could possibly recommend here to to our city. Appreciate you. you We're around. Not hesitate to to ask. And. Obviously, you know, Carolyn uh, has a lot of knowledge, and you know, so we have you're really lucky to have her. <laughs> so, um, yeah, um, so we have been to many trainings together, and <laughs> um, have a common favorite person that has been a, a great uh, mentor for that was me, but um. Thank you to that person. <laughs> and that person was the one who said, yes, go for it. Yeah, yes. Um, but if there's a few, there's a few minutes if y'all have any burning questions that you want to ask. You're uh, you mentioned something about uh, community. I don't know where I wrote that down, but like a chat line or something like that. That's that's open to the community. 
Um, translation one? Uh, no, not a translation board. Come in, come in, ask questions, ask the money. Yeah, but not come in. Was it? Was that oh, by phone? Oh, no, the drop in detention. Drop in, or is it drop in? Yeah. So um, that um, that I'm referring to is, is actually our staff. They're dropping it. It's a twice a month um, uh, opportunity, and but our USOR group that I'm doing, uh, or United Shoreline Organized Against Racism, they meet twice a month. Once a month, I think it's, uh, the first Tuesday of the month is on Zoom, and so community members can uh, just join and talk about, um, you know, their thoughts around. And pieces of that. And then in, on the third Tuesday of the month, they meet in person at um, Bethel Lutheran in Shoreline. So if folks are interested, I'm happy to share um, about, you know, more about USOR and, and the residents that are involved in that uh, work. They're really great. They just did a People Suffer event that Constance's um, program supported. And that's, you know, again, getting people together and talking um, who may not interact at all. Do you have a lot of um, grassroots members that attend? You have all of these wonderful offerings and I'm wondering how they're attended and if they're attended by the same people all the time. Well, I think, you, yeah, you sort is I would say our grassroots effort, the resident group. Um, and like anything, it has had a lot of um, fluctuation and participation. So. That is something that they want more to have a different group, you know, different folks involved. Um, but yeah, and I think that's the point too of City Learn because I'll let you speak for that something, you know. Yeah, I was a lot of it's it's you you get to know people very well yeah. because they come to everything and they have voices that often are the only ones in the room. Right. And that, that really is what we were trying to, to change. Um, or I mean, you, I'm not sure you could change it. It was like offering an alternative. And I, it's, it's building slowly. Um, it's been great to have people, we, I just got uh, disclosed to our citywide applications. And in looking over it, I mean, both of us looked at it and said, these are not people we know. I recognized a couple of names, and that is really exciting. In the very beginning, when we started um, CityWise, we wanted to make sure that people who were not coming to all the council neighborhoods meetings, in fact, we actually, we, we when we were doing it in person, we had a much more limited number who could come because so much of it is participatory. Um, we actually said no to some folks. It's like, you're here enough. You're here in city. Oh, we probably didn't say it that way, but that was it. <laughs> it's like, let's make room for people who've never had the opportunity to meet staff, to meet council members, to actually start forming relationships um, with City Hall. That kind of program is on my work plan this year. And Constance and I are going to meet for lunch soon, so I can learn more from her on how she will develop the program. So, <laughs> well, and we we recognize that this is a program too that really can be developed differently. Yeah. Um, you you created Community Bridge, which was um, a, a pilot for. A, a different reason, but using some of the city-wise principles and materials. Yeah, I mean, uh, so and we could talk more about this yeah. uh, for sure, but yeah, but how do we have uh, an array for the folks? You know, there's some folks who are going to be able to attend eight weeks in the evening, but some folks cannot. And so what can we do to still engage and, um, and provide information to those community members? So. And we're hoping City Learn will, will step into that a little bit more too. You know, as I was listening throughout your presentation, you know, I kept, I realized I was kind of almost writing down the same questions over and over and over again, you know, with the same theme. And, um, and the theme was, you know, to what you're just talking about is, you know, who's involved, 
Mm -hmm. um, is it, you know, are you West Africans, Hispanics, Asians, Blacks, are they involved in all of this, these meetings and these events? And if so, you know, how did that happen? I, I moved to the shoreline in 2016 um, from the Northeast, then I left in 2020. But um, the thing that jumped out at me, because you know, I was retired and I was walking all over the place, and, and um, I saw minorities out and about when I was walking, but I never saw them at the park. I never saw them at the parks. You know, yet this the 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 neighborhood parties. You know, I live on Fifth and Fifteenth, and um, the house that next to where the house that burned down in twenty eighteen, <laughs> and um, and um, and I never saw them at the parties or or um, you know the events, the various events. And I used to say to myself, "Where are they at?" I could, you know, where kind of like what I'm saying here now in Mount Lake Terrace. I know they're here. Where are they at? And um, so. I guess that's what I've been writing down. And yeah. You talk about this change. Is that change really happening with those groups or is it just happening with a different group of white folks? Yeah, good question. I think um, institutions have, have served white communities um, most. And so cultural and ethnic communities aren't necessarily like I'm a part, you know, I'm half Samoan. So when I went to my cultural events, I'm going to South, you know, King County or Federal Way. Like we're not, we're not necessarily um, depending on your identity, you're not connecting based on your city boundaries. You're connecting on a different maybe it's religious or cultural boundaries. So how like um I was talking about the Gambian Association mm -hmm. of Washington who knew that they were all gathering every year for this massive event in Shoreline because we're not part of the gambling community and yet, you know, um, but then making those connections, like that's what we want to keep growing. Mm -hmm. And then Shoreline actually has a, a very large um, Ethiopian Eritrean community right. for Shoreline Public Schools, Parkwood, um, like the school that, uh, uh, and the RF is the the largest language other than English, like uh, all the other schools is Spanish. I could be wrong now, but that was at one time. Um, so knowing, getting to know the communities and making sure that we're building those relationships versus, as you say, like the more like the somewhat diverse white communities <laughs> where there's a few, but um, but really like the the very um, the more organized, uh, more different ethnic groups, like how do we building that's that's our that's definitely a lot of work still to do. You know, the only other thing that I was writing down was what was impressive was that, you know, and it took me a while to figure out why it was so impressive, but you know, this was like a top down, you know, approach where, you know, the top embraced it and everybody else got on board. And then dawned on me what we were talking about is that building over on Midvale, you know, is this everybody that's who's involved in this, you know, and, I, and, and that gets the differences, which kind of makes it a little tougher is that we're a commission, you know, and we've got to kind of infiltrate and, 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 and work with with them versus, you know, because you got all this money thing, you know, you got these budgets and things like that and because you're the city, you know, and so that helps because it's, it's part of what the city function has to be versus you know, what we're trying to do is advise the city and, you know, you run up against, you know, as you can imagine, vote blocks, you know, because, well, you're not a city employee, you're not, you know, this, 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 and everything else, and it just makes it a little bit, yeah. I'm not going to say difficult or challenging, it's just a different approach you have to, you know, I know when I, when Gear, I went to a Gear conference, there was, there was, that was, probably like in December um, 20, I think it was, the yeah, or January, you know, you had two different groups that were there. You had folks like you who didn't have a commission, but you had, you know, this is your job, this is how we're working. And then you had people like us who was a commission. And, you know, and, and, and it just seemed like you all had a better opportunity to get going you know, then the commissions that didn't have someone, you know, in-house to, um, yeah. to spearhead things, you know. 
I mean, I know we have time. Yeah. Um, I would say two things. So I don't want to sugarcoat it. Like they're sitting under super supportive. Not everyone is. Um, and you, I feel like because you aren't staff, sometimes that's leverage that really pushes staff because you are leaders as commissioners that can help motivate and, um, uh, you know, because because you are community members and a lot of people will say, well, this is what the, this, the, if this enables them to say our community has requested this yeah. and they, and you can hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, and I say that with love, like sure. you hold them accountable, but it's also a motivator, yeah. um, and helps them do what they want to do. Deep down. <laughs> <laughs> they meant <made> so much. <laughs> Thank you. 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 you. I hope you see you again. Yes, you can. Thank you. 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 Okay, we're going to jump right into a recap. Next steps on DEI strategy plan. Okay. Um, okay. 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 Um, okay, so um, I know it's been a little bit since we've been back together. Um, one, I just wanted to give you um, a little bit of uh, when we left our retreat, it was very casual and I know we didn't talk about next steps. So I just wanted to kind of give a little overview of what the purpose again of that retreat was and how the VITA agency is um, absorbing that information. Um, so one, it was really about um, learning from each of us where we are on our DEI journey and what our various backgrounds are and um, building trust amongst each other as we embark on, this is actually really hard work. There's a lot of great opportunity and there's gonna be a lot of good that comes from what we do, but um, there will be challenges along the way. And I think having a group that can understand um, a little bit about each other's backgrounds and experiences um, helps move us forward as a group together. And so, um, um, one of the things that uh, Marcella and Tara are munching on is just um, where, you know, again, where we are. So what are the needs and the goals? And so, so some of that came from that conversation. And the next step is I'm hoping um, in March that the data agency will come with OTAC, the Comprehensive Plan Consultant. And for both of their different reasons, for the Comprehensive Plan and for the Strategic Plan for DEI, be talking to you more directly about goals and um, policy ideas that you have for DEI related topics. And so they also are working on um, interviews with leadership team staff members and individual council members to learn about their priorities or challenges as they may be. And um, there's also going to be some community engagement for the comprehensive plan coming up. And obviously equity is a component of the comprehensive plan. So there's more opportunity um, in March and April to be um, working on gathering information from the community through that process. And I, I may have mentioned to you, but I can't recall if I did, um, OTAC has hired the VITA agency to support their community engagement work um, because of their DEI experience. And so we've been, um, asked by council and the CPAG and the planning commission to do a better job of reaching out to our diverse communities and underrepresented communities. And so um, VITA agency will be helping with that component. Um, so that's sort of a, a highlight of the next steps, but I'm happy to answer any other questions that you have about the process. Well, 
I think um, something he just said. Um, he said that um, they we want us to do a better job of reaching out to um, I guess what I'm asking is is um, no, I'm not going to ask that. If this isn't about the DEI commission, this is about the comprehensive plan. Okay. Okay. All right. Then you know You've been doing a lot of reaching out. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. Right. We'll see the fruits of it. Right. I got another question. This came out today, this afternoon. I read it. <clears throat> I don't understand it. And I know a couple of people, when they read this, they're going to say the same thing. And this is from Lan. Yes. You know, this is, I don't know, maybe it's just me. But it's a very confusing email. Okay. As to you know what people are supposed to do because it talks about these topics that are not going to be selected yet. But but you got to pick a session for it. It's, it's, it's not. Very yeah. Okay. I understand what you're saying. Um, I was going to talk about that here. Um, so we're implementing a survey of staff um, next week to understand where staff are and understanding of DEI issues. And um, and of course, the VDA, VDA agency had a chance to meet with you already. Um, so we're trying to figure out from this survey where the gaps are. And that will inform what the training session is going to be. All those training sessions will be the same topic. Okay. And so we're just asking people to choose a date because we can fit about 50 people in each of the So training. the first session will be one topic and the second session will be no. another topic? No. Oh, they're so all the all same topic. Same. We're trying to train 200 people. In so sessions. it's just, it's all, you pick one from, not from each session, but just one period. Oh, so, yeah. for, so the, for the one to four is one. But in April, you have to choose one. Of yeah, then you pick one. Okay, so there's two, two, two going to be two topics. Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. that was the question. Yes. Yeah. So I think it's confusing because they're both called sessions. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was yeah. going to say. <laughs> it should be like um, section. Yeah, yes. okay. Topic it, one. Or opportunity one, one two, two, three, yes. four. It was yeah. confusing because in you, his email, yeah. he used the word and instead of or. So so right now, the only yeah. thing is a, to pick one from the April session, one session from the April dates. Yes. And then later, we'll pick one session from the May dates mm -hmm. for the other topic. I, I guess the thing that 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 you know maybe I mean I know this already went out, but you know the 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 line that says the training series have two topics. Boom, that's the first thing. The topic focus will be determined after completion of the DEI employee survey, which will be sent out of the week of February twenty six. But then when we get down to the you know this other stuff. Like you said, the session sounds like there's supposed to be something other. And then it's, it's, it's almost the idea of the survey gets lost in all of this discussion about the sessions and the topic. Mm -hmm. so, you know, it sounds like I felt like, especially where it said, when you click on, you know, which I couldn't click on anything. Right. You, I couldn't you click on <laughs> yeah. and you can pick. And I'm thinking a topic, you know, uh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, because, yeah. because that's what it said on the paper, you know, it said a topic, you know. And you know, like so and so picked a topic. So it's just confusing, I think. That and I, I guess are we gonna get surveyed too, or will the no, will no. our input be come from your input the workshop? came from the workshop? Oh yeah, yeah. Um the will we be attending the sessions? We're asking you to attend. Okay. That's said, why you have to be now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you can just respond to land with the topic, the session yep. that works the best. Okay. Yes. Yes. I already responded. Okay. Yeah, I did. Too. Thank you. I apologize that it was confusing. Um, so I guess point number one, there's one topic and you have four options to choose from. Well, let me ask this question. Everybody's going to attend the April sessions, right? Yeah. Okay. So we probably, does anybody even know about the May sessions? She mentioned it, but she didn't offer the okay. sessions to try and okay. to confuse okay. me. But okay. I just wanted you to know okay. the dates. Right. Gotcha. Because okay. I know everyone gets busy. Yeah. And so I 
Um, Thank you. And we tried to offer one in the evening, but there's some throughout the day, and obviously that's more focused on staff. But you're welcome to attend any of them. Mm -hmm. And um, so that that is that, and yeah, we yeah. definitely will have more on the um, topics here. Soon. It's a good idea. Sorry. And I'll be post this presentation. I think it was not. In the <laughs> I didn't think I'd seen it. <laughs> yeah. It, well, there was a version, but it wasn't. Yeah. It had been. So. Um, okay. So I'm going to put your ideas into a presentation. This requires some more formatting work, but um, William and Benita have provided some background information since we all weren't here the full year last year. But um, uh, we have a, and I should start out, we have a presentation to City Council on March 7th. And so you're all welcome to come. Typically, the chair or the chair and the vice chair do most of the talking, but you can figure out amongst yourselves how you want to handle that. And we have about 15 or 20 minutes for a presentation, and then the council may ask you some questions or have discussion. Um, but all the boards and commissions, so there's four boards and commissions that are doing presentations that night. Um, so I want to, and, and William sent me a whole bunch of pictures today. I haven't had a chance to go through them all. So <laughs> there might be a better picture to put here that has all of you, but. Um, just wanted to introduce each of you. Um, I found the accomplishment or the goals for 2023 sure. <laughs> and um, tried to kind of address where we were with that. And so, if you want to take a minute and present you that, that you want to do that now. And then also um, with police training, you know, um, when we talked about that a year ago, it was, it was making sure that, you know, we have world presence with like cops and clergy, which we are, you know, when, they, when, that, oh. when that we upped, you know, we were there at the beginning mm -hmm. and pretty much did at the end. Did you go to the December 7th then? I did. I missed the February one. I didn't know that was February. Well, yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> so I didn't get an email, so I'll email Matt. Police training was also about developing a relationship with the police. Yeah. Right. Right. I didn't get it. Yeah. I just knew when it was happening, so I tried to put it on my calendar. But oh, I missed like well, in February we had five Thursday, and it shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> so, Did it right? Really? Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah, also, they're like the 29th is because the yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Thursday. Yeah. And so uh, that's why. Uh, that yeah. makes sense. So I missed. Okay. Well, and you can I'll, I'll email email Matt so we can get from them. Thank you. Yeah. Send me. The class, class of yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, all right. It's amazing. Yeah, I really enjoyed the ones that I made it. It's <laughs> awesome. Um, I think what we wanted to do, you know, and that was right from the beginning, was we wanted the you know the police department to feel comfortable with a DEI commission and the DEI commission to feel that they could be empowered to go in and have conversations, good conversations with the chief, the commandant, you know, come down, what do you call commandants and oh, commanders. commanders and uh, and then another and the staff, you know, without a whole lot of conflict. That, that was what the goal okay. was. And I think that's where we're we're kind of there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can go ahead. I was just gonna ask if the plan is last year, William. I think that's a good visual representation of that relationship development. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's any other edits to this that you want to make. And chime in, folks. Please chime in. This is going to be our report. 
you know, I realized I didn't do much. We've done a lot since June. Well, you did you did ask us all to submit what we've done, so yeah. Yeah. we have a whole bunch of slides. Something from all of us in it. This was just more sort of um, addressing what I I think this is what was presented. This yeah, evening. for instance, yeah. for mm -hmm. so I was just re responding to that. Mm -hmm. Um, so I wanted to summarize, and this isn't final by any means, um, just some big highlights. So there's a lot of detail that follow, but, um, there's so many events that you all attended, like dozens. And so mm -hmm. I thought it would be interesting to do like a stats page where like commissioners attended X number of outside events to develop relationships, learn, you know, meet people up in the region of community. Um, the proclamation process, um, Let's see. joining uh, Welcome America and Care, advising on the tree code and the comp plan. Um, I think it's important to remind the council in so many words what the mission statement is so that they can yes. see that this is, That's true. you know, answering to and responding to our, our mission statement. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not off track. But for the thing, I mean, they they the initial the initial mission statement that was on the web page was written by them, and then we rewrote it. Me and Alvaro, 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 uh, Alvaro, and um, um, Hannah, Rowan, and Rowan, yeah, you know, got together, and, <laughs> there and um, you know, and then. Kind of like rewrote it, okay. you know. So, so use the one from the current web page. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um. So this one I started to try to summarize your bullet points just into smaller sections, but we can still work on last words now that I have more pictures. Mm -hmm. so, um. Let's see. I think these were things that I came up with, and then you sent me your big list. So I have to kind of merge them. Mm -hmm. So, um, so they, this, these all came from William, and I just have to kind of figure out how to. Yeah, what I did, folks, is like when y'all sent me all the information, I figured the best way to do is, is, is again, I had the mission statement in front of me, but yeah, I kind of looked at what do we do every every month, and then you know. When I was looking at it, you know, you know, I wasn't expecting things like to go kind of haywire at home. But the idea was look at these things and will we present it by month or will we present it by category? You know, because we had so many different things that happened pretty much almost every month. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 I kind of like the way she formatted it. You know, by month because it didn't look like we were stale mm -hmm. during the year. <laughs> you know. Um, um, so I'll I'll read for that. Right. And all the photos I sent was she asked if you if she go through the thing, she's like, is there photos? Is there photos? Mm -hmm. and photos? So you know, for every month I said, she's looking for a photo. Um, <laughs> you sent me some. <laughs> um, yeah, so these are these are basically just all things you've all been up to, um, mostly outside of the meetings. So. So I think what I'll do is I'll keep a couple slides up front that are like meeting focused, mm -hmm. and then we'll have some slides that look like your community work. Yeah, things. you know, so. I mean, you know, the photos will we'll say a lot more than what you know me and her can say. You know, we can put them up. Most of the um, um, council hopefully will will recognize what they're looking at. Mm -hmm. You know, because they were part of it or you know know something about it, and mm -hmm. we can just. Good right over it and, and move forward, and, you know, and not take up a lot of time, but you know, get what we need to get accomplished. Um, and then we we talked briefly about this in a previous meeting, but it was like November. So I just wanted to make sure that you're comfortable with these goals, or if there's something missing, you know, feel free to chime in. When is the due date for 
the whole comprehensive plan. The end of this year. The end of this year. So when we are saying we're gonna, we hope to have an ultimate recommendation of a plan to the city council, what would be that date for us? Um, well, so like in March, uh, when the team comes to ask you about equity related goals, that's an opportunity for you to get feedback. I think they might come back again with because they, they're doing the policies or the sections because there's like seven elements, I believe, of the equity plan. So, um, they might come back again with some more goals and policies, um, for you to focus on, and then. At some point, the um, draft will be out for review, and so I don't think they'll come back and ask for your like opinions per se on the draft. But you're welcome as citizens to comment on the draft. For, um, so, and that um, I believe the draft is expected to be out in the summer um, because we're trying to wrap this up before council gets deep into the budget. And, that, and it's not to say as a group you couldn't have comments on the comp plan. It would just mean that you'd have to talk about it in a meeting and jointly put your comments in a letter. So, but if you want to do that, that individually, that's fine as well. I'm trying to make a suggestion. Um, it's going to be on my list of things to talk about during my council update, but I mean, we get our kind of first as council and I report back of comprehensive plan updates tomorrow. Um, maybe it would be helpful to have a standing meeting item uh, for this, for the commission this year to just touch base on, you know, what's been discussed and if the council or if the commission has any feedback or conversation that they want to have about the comprehensive plan. I mean, I know we've got some formal yeah. points plan, Carolyn, and I just know that there's, if there are concerns, I mean, and to your point, I, you guys can bring those forward at any time, but I also, I guess, worry about getting too far down the path if there are concerns um, and not being able to integrate those into the, the conversation. So I, I don't want to disrupt yeah. our plan, yeah. but I also guess I want to make sure that it's visible enough that this group is tracking and if they have feedback can provide it in a timely yeah. manner where it can be incorporated. Um, yeah, I um, sent out the uh, the recent information from, from CBAG to the commissioners. Oh, and, yeah, and, right. uh, and it comes with so much of all of the work that the planning committee has been up to over the last whatever 18 months or so. Um, and so they've come down to three possible um, alternatives, alternatives uh, design efforts. And uh, one is if we don't do any, don't make any changes, and the, the uh, commission's findings or the committee's findings is that it wouldn't meet the the demand for um, uh, housing and increase in population that's predicted uh, over the next twenty or so years. So, but that's I think information that has to come out to the to the community so that. Nobody goes around thinking we don't have to change anything. Uh, the other two alternatives meet, and the third, I think, exceeds um, and opens the possibility for, for more development and going forward. So the third um, option to me seems like the, the plan that we almost need to get to as quickly as we, we can. Because to me, from a DEI perspective, it it uh, creates more uh, community focused opportunities. You know, for me, I meet up with my community at QFC, 
or Starbucks <laughs> or the restaurant. You know, it's those places where I haven't seen this person in a while, or I'm mowing the lawn and somebody walks by. It's all happenstance. And that third option creates more of that kind of happenstance. Well, maybe, uh, maybe I'll backtrack. I forgot that we had a dedicated representative at the commission yeah. and since we didn't have a January meeting. So I'd say if you're keeping the commission informed and like we have the opportunity for you to share your reports here, maybe that is a, an unnecessary request. I just wanted yeah, to make no. sure that there wasn't a miss in communication between the work that, you know, they are doing and that we are hearing as a council and this commission. So. Yeah, and, and you know what I, what I appreciate, Scott, is a you sent that information out with all that information yeah. but more importantly you gave us your insight of what it all meant mm -hmm. you know so you know a lot of information but your, you know your words kind of like helped us help me i can't speak for the rest yeah. of us you know see what see what you're seeing so thank you yeah you bet mm -hmm. and uh, you know i wish that i was smart enough to be able to give input on a regular basis when i go to those meetings because <laughs> I'm surrounded by really smart people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are smart. Um, I'm sure you your opinion, opinion means a lot. And um, and I do want to say that those alternatives will be the focus of um, upcoming meetings, uh, the public meetings. And so there'll be two rounds of public meetings, one sooner, like in the end of March. Um, and I believe they'll reveal the alternatives there. And then in April or May, we'll do another round and that will be on the draft environmental impact statement. And that's where they're evaluating those three alternatives in detail. Like what are the impacts? What are the repercussions yes. of these three alternatives? So um, we're working on the engagement plan for all of that right now. So, um, so any other comments on the work plan? Thoughts? There was one thing we talked about um, in November or December, I think, um, and that was doing an event in April. And I was wondering if anybody has had any connection with the mosque about making a, that's on the agenda. Okay, great, thanks. Um, okay, so I'll work on putting that up and get that to you soon. And thank you for all your input. Throw that over lunch for all the stuff that I'm sending her. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, for some food, I got to vote. <laughs> okay. Um, we cap on the diversity fair. Um, I think, oh, did I do this in the wrong order? Okay, the diversity fair. Uh, we had a diversity fair. <laughs> we went to it and we met with um, uh, people from Edmonds and Linwood um, commissions and students, and it was loud sometimes, and it was wonderful. <laughs> Were you there all day? Yeah. 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 I, I'm sorry I couldn't say. Um, oh, it was great to see people. Good. Thank you. People for take pictures. the candy. Yes, people yeah. took candy. Yeah. Um, we ended up with extra still, but uh, people took candy. Um, people participated. So wow. I gave you a bra. That's not the right poster. Huh? That one is a Girl Scout poster. I don't oh. think you want that. One. Oh, I was wondering. Like, <laughs> yeah, I was that? like, yeah. why are you talking about the Girl Scout leaders? They have to marry it. That was the picture. I'm on my camera. <laughs> it was probably on the back of one of those posters. It, it, it was, it was so yeah. So okay. Do you want me to email you this slide? Sure. <laughs> I took a couple of things. I don't think I need that one. But no, I have them. That's good. Yes, that one's good. Uh, okay. so, <laughs> I typed one up because some of them are And then we had the the picture the mark work. Yeah. yeah. One of the kids one of the students drew that and then another student was there asking, what is that about? And then the mom was explaining about how different religions and being inclusive to everybody and that they're open. That was wonderful. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys wanted to talk a little bit about like what worked and what 
what we could do better next time, or if there was any like connections you need or things like that. Um, I think knowing more in advance about these things that are coming up would be helpful, but um, a lot of that we are at the schedule of our partners. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the host of the events gets to set the, the time frame. Okay. <laughs> I don't always know those dates, but um, so that would be helpful. Uh, I liked that we were able to connect, uh, that we did meet with some folks from Linwood, and uh, one of the people from Edmonds came by and was talking to us. From the commissions? Yeah. But uh, they didn't they, work with you? The Linwood Commission did, and they had they had pretty awesome swag. Oh. Mm. What kind of yeah. swag? <laughs> they had, um, like, little notebooks. Yeah. And yeah. Stickers. Yeah, and stickers, yeah. One of the things that we talked about that we should have, I don't know if you can see it in the pictures, because the pictures are kind of focused on the posters, but if there's a background picture where if we have, if we're going to do these things, if we have a, a table skirt with mm -hmm. our logo, mm -hmm. you know, yes, um, that or end or, you know, um, they had available for all the tables to be able to put a um, behind the table a big thing, you know, your oh. logo or whatever. So we had a vertical logo, mm -hmm. you know, in addition mm -hmm. to the one that we had. You mean like a pop up one? Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. You know, mm -hmm. you know, something to think about that one. And some of the um, trifle stamps were were kind of hinky. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they're just, oh. they're, yes, they yeah, have been seen in. better days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the, especially the plastic ones. Like, oh, yeah. we didn't want to break them. <laughs> tape. <Yep>. Um, <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah, well, yeah. As, if you think about swag, and what did their swag say? Did it say the DEI commission or something? Uh, or was it more like diversity? Like all are welcome? Oh, yeah. All are welcome. They have yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's like your city brand. Yeah, that was yeah. the city stuff. Yes, it was not commissioned. Right. Stuff. Logos. We might develop a brand someday. <laughs> That'd be exciting. Economic development. <laughs> um, okay. So now, what do we have? Now we got the proclamations. So. Um, Nominals first, so we'll do that. And we can talk about the event and things like that. Um, oh, I forgot to read that one. And don't you want to take out the word in also? Around the world, Gaston. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My communications are mm -hmm. not used to mark that one, so I had to find mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. me go across mm -hmm. um, And uh, Ricky did recommend, I guess, in the past, there's been a little pushback on the actual dates. So she, um, I guess this is what we've been using in the past is just recognizing the commencement of Ramadan instead of mm -hmm. actual dates. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. We learned a lot about that last year. Yeah, it was, very interesting. It was fascinating. Yeah, it was actually, yeah. yeah, I was going to say, yeah, there's a lot of complexity there. But yeah, it was very interesting. There any, any, there's no concern about this part. I mean, that was sort of history, I think. Um, I think, it, yeah, it's, I like that history. Yeah. Karen, does that reflect what we used last year? I guess that was so last year we had somebody who um, was knowledgeable in this space um, okay. to help with that. So I guess I would just want to refer back to whatever. Karen knows about it. Yeah. Or having somebody who is knowledgeable to review it. It sounds right. Yeah. I don't guess I actually. 
on the ground, leave this year. Oh, my gosh. baby. And so she joined the Middle School PTA today. Wow. So we sent her to Cedar Way tonight to welcome the sixth graders. Oh, yeah. So I can check in with her, too. Yeah. Is that much? Okay. Yeah. It's been nice to meet you. 20 to 30 days. So, whereas, uh, let's see. It's oh, almost like an extra item. Like there's like maybe one higher licensing. Um, I got a question. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Um, what did I just see? Did you just delete it? I think um, it was the other one, three. last year's. This is yeah. This one is the good time to share. Whereas the city of Mount Lake is home to a thriving Muslim community. That and we appreciate. This was the old one. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. And I wasn't suggesting we couldn't make changes to the verbiage. I guess just in terms of like the history and timing. I was, yeah. Like we were very, we had again, lots of thoughtful conversation about that last year. So. Well, you know, what I, what I saw was, you know, that part about, and we appreciate it. You know, and I guess you're well, we taking that out. The reason why I asked that question because do we have we appreciate? Yeah, you know, and I say that because when we did that thing with the Hispanics and we took the proclamations to them, they said no one's ever done this before. So for us to say we appreciate it, and, you know, as if we've been doing it, do we really have we really as a city? As a city. The Members of the community and city have reached out in times of crisis to uh, and showing support in times of uh, attacks on other Muslim churches in the community and at other mos at mosques. Um, I know that there has been um, an outpouring of support from our community and our city. Um, well, Scott, when you and I were talking to him, was that the president of the mosque we were talking to? Yeah. He was talking about how supported he felt by the surrounding neighborhood. Yeah. So maybe that would be all right. Yeah. I just said when I hear a group saying, well, you know, we appreciate your contribution. I understand what you're yeah. You know, how, how have we demonstrated that? I mean, because this, the city's before? saying it, has the city demonstrated it before? I guess is the question. Right. Okay. But um, it sounded like they felt appreciated by neighbors, but the neighbors, yeah, yeah. especially when they have. Mm -hmm. uh, I just thought I throw that out there because when I see, no, I get, I get what you're saying, yeah. They, 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 I just remember what we heard when we went to every every Hispanic business <laughs> in Mount Lake Terrace, yeah. you know, and they were like, "Whoa, we've been here a long time. This is the first. We didn't know it really was appreciated, but here it is, uh, as we are." You know, that was quote unquote not my word says. You know, he, he gave me his, his phone number um, and said contact him okay. because I invited him here. Okay. Um, and uh, he never responded. So, okay. Now I'll find him in notes. I was just throwing out, you know, I saw that there. So, you know, I, I needed to ask the question. Because, no, it's a you know, about, good question. You know, Making sure that what we're saying and what we're doing or what we're thinking and what we're feeling and what we're doing and all matched up. I mean, together. if we do this, it, it indicates that we are. I think we also have to remember that um, people at the city, whether it's the council or staff or all of you, we all know different people in the community. So yeah. it might be that people have relationships with Latinos in other parts of the community, but not the business owners yeah. or. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, we're not reaching out. As we already know we're not reaching out well enough to different community groups. Yeah, so, sure. by you going to a business and handing them the resolution, uh, the proclamation is um, very meaningful. Yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> All right. Um, all right. So, since I'm in this, all right, we'll go back. So, um, 
Thanks. Um, here are any proposed changes. Um, so we talked a little bit about um, reaching out to people at the mosque that some of you have met. Yes. And um, one idea was to have dinner with them, which is a, you can or you can decide you want to do that or not, and I can help you organize that. Um, uh, officially, the council has not accepted that, the lead on that, but if you want to host and you want to invite council to join me, you, we can do it that way. And um, we can set something up, but I would need one of you to reach out to the people that you've met um, to make that invitation and we could work on a date. One idea was to do it the night of the proclamation before a council meeting, and then you walk over and we have the proclamation and they could receive it if they're willing to do that. However, I have heard from Ricky again that there's been, um, there are people in the Muslim community who don't want to make a public appearance and that there's definitely sensitivity at the mosque um, for uh, retaliation and risk um, of their safety, seeing as you know that mm -hmm. the yeah. is up there. Yeah. So I think on one hand, like I don't think we should be offended if they say no. Right. Yeah. Um, and certainly one of you could accept it on their behalf and, and present mm -hmm. it to them later. So well tell me about the village. Right. It, like there's the timing right. and we need to look at like the, the calendar yeah. and the sunset the on that was, day. To see well, it. the idea was to give it to yeah. them uh, and maybe do the dinner the week before, okay. um, which I think is the first week okay. in March, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so no, I, I think March 7th. I think our meeting, yeah, the proclamation would be on the 7th, ideally. Um, So, so it's up to you. Um, just recapping so some conversation. We should get back with with them, people that we've we've met. Yeah. Um, yeah, the contact number. I have a, a yeah. contact number. Yes. And a, and a name. Anyway, I have to look it up. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to get back from the back here. Ask me if you let me know if you need any help in there. Um oh, Corinne. He'll be back. Yeah. He'll be he's back tomorrow. He and I are meeting Friday. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, he would know, I think. Or he he would understand mm -hmm. the the proper way to go about doing this. Well, mm -hmm. I think since it's not him that we're recognizing. We don't want to assume that he's comfortable with what they're going to do, want to want to do. You know, we need to be comfortable with what they want to do. So. And if and if you want to invite them more formally, like with an invitation or a letter, I can prepare that for you. Um, so just let me know what your thoughts are. And and like you don't have to do the dinner thing. It's no, just an idea no. of a way to begin a relationship. Mm -hmm. So and I'm happy to be there with you and organize. Mm -hmm. I mean, or well, they can just we can sit down and go over there and if they want to invite us over and have a conversation. Yeah. As to why we're even doing this. Yeah. You know. I mean, you know, I mean, and that's a starting point. That's okay. what we're trying to establish. So, you know. Yeah. Well, the person that we met, his brother owns the restaurant. Oh, right. okay. Or his brother-in-law, maybe. His brother-in-law. Yeah. And he really is excited to do things with us. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think he <laughs> When is. I bought dinner from over there, he was like, over the top. Very nice. Yeah. So what can we expect to, to have a conversation? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess one question I have is, would just culturally would it be better coming from one of the male one of our male yes commissioners yeah yeah well talk to for him. You will, you will, or you will? 
Okay. Send Cookie and send him an email tonight okay. or tomorrow. Just send him an email because he's not here. Okay. Okay. Because he's going to see me on Friday and then he can tell me what he's going to do. Okay. Okay. But he needs to know ahead of time. Because he has. What we want him to do. Yeah. Because he has been in contact with the council in, in already, current. I don't know. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You know. Seems like we were talking about that with him, but I don't yeah. remember exactly. Okay. All right, so let me know how I can help you. And then, um, and I think maybe the best thing is even if they don't want to be here in person, if one of you accepts, we can deliver it to them. Mm -hmm. And that would be another way to keep the conversation mm -hmm. going. So, um, all right. Um, now, would we only want to do, when we say to them, who would we be delivering it, it to? Um, well, I would just offer that we would like to get it to the leadership of the mosque, and okay. whether that's their Amman or their board or elders, like whoever they think is appropriate. Mm -hmm. It could be all of them. Yeah, I think you're right. There. The, the one above it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, all right, so um, I wish that Karim was here, but maybe we could, maybe we could share this with him because it was his idea. But I, why don't we get your uh, thoughts on it, and I can email it to him directly and just make sure he mm. didn't have any changes. So this one was um, a little challenging because there's so many um, countries and places in the world that celebrate this mm -hmm. and uh, from being from Turkey was the one who brought it up. So I used the date from Turkey, but also we have a lot of Mexican um, descendants and um, uh, 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 <laughs> here in, in the city. So, um, but so I've tried to mention um, who else is celebrating this month in April. Uh, but I thought we could recognize April 23rd. So, um, what are your thoughts? Would we do it two different days? Or no, or just combine this, the language? I, well, we the way I wrote it is sort of combining all of the. Mm -hmm. Countries and places that are okay. in April, but that we would commemorate April 23rd. Yeah. But I don't think it's right. It's not that. And Japan celebrates it as well. Or we could just say April, but it's FOJ sort of starting mm -hmm. it. But um, most, most nations have a date. But. You know, <laughs> I think that. that my own opinion is that since there's so many different groups and so many different dates, what would probably be non-exclusive is if the proclamation was done on a date that's none of those dates, but in that month, so that not one group feels that they're the ones who this is for and the other's not. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, do we know for sure what date all those different places are so that we would know for sure we weren't landing on well, somebody's date? Is the yeah, thing. April 4th is the council meeting, and April 18th would be the other day that we would normally do proclamations. Mm -hmm. And I don't think the 18th is any of those countries' day. Um, however, the other thing that we talked about is more related to the Turkish celebration, right. which is to bring children to. Mm -hmm. The council and um, I had a couple of thoughts about that, which might be helpful to the conversation. Which is, um, since it's COP plan public engagement time, one idea was either in that mark in the March time frame when we're doing the first round of outreach is to engage with some children, whether that be middle schoolers or high schoolers or a Girl Scout troop or, or something along those lines. Um, to get their ideas about the future of Mount Lake Terrace. And then maybe they come to council the night of the proclamation, share their ideas as sort of a presentation, and then they receive the proclamation afterwards. It 
it's a little bit of a modification of how Krem and mm-hmm. what have we read about Turkish children's day, which is more you give up your seat of power mm-hmm. and the children rule for the day, which just mm-hmm. takes more time. And, um, well, you know, from our conversation with that, you know, I had wrote down, you know, say MLT high DEI board mm-hmm. to a presentation of what they're talking about. Their student government comes mm-hmm. and um, because one of those is, you know, when, you know, that the, one of them is, is the elected officials bring their children, you know, and they take over, mm-hmm. you know, so, you know, like maybe, you know, so not just DEI, but, you know, it's, you know, the student government mm-hmm. comes and do, you know, a present, you know, a little short presentation on what they got going on. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe we can get like an elementary school to come in, you know, a class to come in and sing a song at the city council, mm-hmm. you know, um, or and or um, maybe like the middle school, you know, if we have time to, you know, have a a group of kids that, you know, what do I want the city to look like when I'm an adult? And, you know, do that real quick and, and have that all over City Hall, you know, during, you know, that whole month. Or at least the day that the proclamation was in the city. It's in, it's in the Cherry Bridge, it's in the hallway, you know, for all to see. You know, that, that's, that's, you know, what I got. That's that we could do, yeah. you know. What are your? Oh, do they have a? Do they have a? At the middle school level, do they have like a government? Yep. Because maybe get a class that's studying about government or something. They have a leadership class uh-huh. where the um, planners or the student planning team um, meets, and that's their elective time. And so they that might be an interesting thing about yeah, them because that's, that's cool. sort of what they're doing. Yeah, yeah we got to get the high school involved. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah. And I have that contact. Yeah, that would be gotta, gotta, yeah. But I mean, they have their well. I mean, the middle school probably has student government also, but yeah, yeah. But um, technically, the middle school's in Briar. <laughs> yeah, but it's technically it is all middle school. Yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 yeah, all of that, all the one of the elementary in the school quadrant and the high school are in Mount Terrace. Huh. But yeah. Briar and Briar Elementary, BTMS, Briar Middle School, and uh, Briar, Briar Elementary, Briar Terrace Middle School, <laughs> yeah. uh, are in in the city limits. Yeah. So, um, so the first idea was Montlake Terrace High School DEI group and just explaining like what their goals or their issues were. Mm-hmm. Is that yeah. right? What are your all? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so then uh, you mentioned student council and then there was a alternative motion to use the middle school uh, student council for the leadership class you said, mm-hmm. which is a student council, right? Yeah, the student um, council officers have to be in that class. Like their schedule changes after they win the election. And then elementary school to sing a song. So for um, the elementary school, you, we'd reach out to Robin Larson. Who's she's Robin Larson. Yeah. She's the uh, music director for uh, Terrace Park. And she runs a choir. And I think her choir is the only one that travels this now since COVID. Mount Lake Terrace Elementary used to have one too, but I don't think they Doesn't do. The, so the, well, and that's there's not Briar, one at the high school. Yeah, and Briar Elementary has a choir, but it's Briar Elementary is that the there. So what school are we talking? Terrace. <laughs> okay. There's okay. also two perform at the tree lighting. Yeah, they perform at the tree lighting, and they performed at the quadrant concert. Okay, cool. They slew, they, She jumps into one of the other quadrants because they're the only school that travels the choir in our whole southeast quadrant because the high school. Dropped by uh, COVID. And if, so if each of these groups had about five minutes, do you feel like that's too long from a council perspective? No, I don't think so. I mean, honestly, if we could plant some seeds with like that many folks in our community, and I think particularly if we could find a way to have it align with the day that we are talking about the comprehensive mm-hmm. plan in some way, shape, or form, like I would love to, you know, or something that maybe we want some additional community engagement around. I think that that would be a really natural. So I just think you're going to have the parents of all those kids. Oh, that's exactly, yes. 
And they may not be people who would normally attend city council stuff anyway. Probably yeah. are not. Yeah. <laughs> well, we could write some um, speaking points um, for the mayor about. Um, we're glad to hear about your viewpoints on diversity, equity, inclusion. Um, your goals for the future of the city, and just a reminder that we have this opportunity. Blah blah blah. Whenever that is to sure. comment on the comp plan. Um, I'm thinking about the other kids that aren't singers or how they might be able to participate in this. And maybe it's an art thing. Maybe it's drama like Terrace. And what I call it drama like Terrace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and submit it and mm -hmm. we'll put it up on this wall. Or an essay. Like that. You know, some yeah. kids don't draw, but some kids do write. Yeah, you know, maybe the poem, you know, something that the school can get the kids to to illustrate. Yes, you know, what do I want future about like terrace? Or how you see Montlake Terrace now? What's Montlake Terrace for you? What is what does it represent for you? And you know, isn't uh -huh. that what we're trying to do as as DEI to get people, everyone, to participate? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a big opportunity coming up for welcoming week where we could do a lot of yes. this. Um, I mean, proclamations are usually yeah. kind of a short part of the right. council right. meeting, so we have to be a little mindful of yeah, the very, very beginning. Uh, I yeah. think it would be good too to give more lead time to teachers to have their classes do things to be more contributory. There are a lot of demands on yeah. teacher time. So it's like us saying to council, we want you to do this. And yeah. the teachers feel that same pushback for things. So talking about making it be for Welcome Week and having a broader connection mm -hmm. and buy-in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Welcome Week was in September, though. So yeah, we should start talking about that. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Um, for right. next but, meeting, but, think about yeah. <laughs> But starting to talk to the teachers at that time as they prepare for the next year, is they can talk about like goals for the school year and then goals for the city, and they can tie Okay. Like to, okay, then what would we like to see happen <laughs> for Children's Day or children, you know, for this? Well, how much time would we really have to have somebody that like the choir, the middle school, and the high school? Well, again, it goes to that. the buy in of what the council buys into because, again, one of the items is here is that your, your elected officials bring their children, you know. And, to take over their seats, but we're not asking them to take over their seats, yeah. but how much is the council willing to give right. their time to the kids at the council meeting mm -hmm. for this? Because that's what the celebration right. is. I mean, I think you it know, would be that's great the to have those, you know, um, the three groups we talked about. Mm -hmm. Well, again, you know, yeah. to her point, though, there may not be time. Well, no. that's that's my question. Yeah. Is how much time? Yeah. Are we well, I mean, time for the teachers to get it together. No, the choir right. could probably pull it together because they yeah. already have stuff prepared. They've been doing it other places. So. And I know the president of the yeah. Briar Terrace Middle School is very responsive because I've known him since he's in kindergarten, and so he responds when I ask him questions. So I can ask if they're available, and he can talk to his class about it and mm -hmm. see if they'd have buy-in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's for the for, for the, the middle singing. school. Okay. Oh, yeah. for the middle I school. can bring in okay. the middle school, and I can can make a connection to the choir. I mean, I, just, I would think they want to structure the meeting accordingly. It would be my only thing. Like, I think this is important, and would love to support it. And I'm sure council would as well. And uh, I think both council and staff. We have, we've run up against we have a hard kind of cause deadline on our meeting, and, <laughs> and I will say we have run up on that a couple of times. And, yeah. We are we've had an act agenda. So that would be my only yes. caveat there. We just um moved a whole bunch of stuff up that one because but let me just see okay. what we've got. Um because so the schedule available online. The link is on the oh the um, long term schedule. Is that yeah, working? it changed when the information of I think it must have changed when we changed the public comment information, but the link that used to go to like our future planning for oh, Jeff is I'll let um, I couldn't find it. I'll let the clerk know. Okay. Um oh on the seventh we have it's not that bad. We have um a presentation by Sound Transit, a public hearing on the fees and a review of an agreement with Sound Transit, which wouldn't take that long. So right now it looks okay. And what date are we looking? Oh, wait. April. 
April. Oh, that's April. No, that's March. I'm, I'm in the wrong meeting. Okay, April. March, uh, oh, April 18th, we might cancel that meeting because of um, the oh. Snohomish County Cities meeting. Um, but we have the fourth, which is spring break. I was going to say, I'm straight. Straight. yeah, I was going to say that is spring break. So it's yeah. a tough week. The fourth is spring break. Yeah, yeah. but it's oh, not going to be when we want those <laughs> to invite the, the kids to school. Right? Yeah, that's going to be a tough sell. That's what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> but the other two are work sessions. I guess we could talk to Jeff and the mayor about whether they're willing to do a proclamation on a work session. We normally just do them at business meetings. So it'd be the 11th or the 20th. The 25th is two days after the Turkish date. Um, but the 11th. Or we could do it, I mean, at that first meeting. And I just think it would, we probably would not be able to ask the school district, I mean, this, you know, yeah. the, the school district, both staff and students will go up that week. So. We would just need to think about a different way to do the proclamation. I think mm -hmm. we couldn't find a different piece. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, so children day April 18th is canceled. Okay. The fourth is spring break. Can we do April? Thank you, Benita, for those um, Okay, we are running out of time. Yes. Okay. Yeah. What else do we have? Just to cover. Um, well, we got upcoming DEI related events that we can take a look at. Mostly just in farm information, right. so and I, I can get this presentation posted today. I added a couple things. Mm -hmm. Um, I do want you to know I think you will be getting you will be getting an invitation to this, but there's going to be volunteer appreciation that is for you on April 20th from two to four. So mark your calendars and you'll get an invitation soon on that. And then you were already invited, I believe, to the uh, State of the City. Mm -hmm. Um, that is a presentation by the city manager, and probably the mayor will be involved with that. And um, uh, this is not required, but if you're interested in uh, attending, it'll be an interesting presentation, and lots of leaders in the community there. And then event planning, we just talked about Children's Day. Um, and I think maybe we could just be thinking about where we want to go with um, welcoming week so we can start planning that. And if we just talk a little bit at each meeting about it, that would be great. I think the library would love to participate, but the art show will be over there at the time. So we'd have to use like the plaza and maybe the council chambers if we wanted some indoor space. Um, if we want to do an event, of course, we did talk about doing some other peripheral things. I think we said that a long time ago was a sound contest, something like that. Um, if the library might be able to partner with us on that because it would be an odd time for schools because it's the very beginning of September. Um, but there's other partners that I think would be interested in doing like a joint calendar if we wanted to partner with um, Shoreline and then there's some of our nonprofit partners. Do they have art classes at the um, rec center um, that are going during the summer? And that would be a place we could... If they can't? Yeah, oh, mm -hmm. they can right. You can have a day camp. Yes, yeah. that would be... A, we could source. The first day of school this year is going to be September 4th. It's like our day is very yeah, shorelines back. It'll be in August. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh. Um, so anyway, just maybe next time come with some ideas for that and um, we can talk more about. It doesn't have to be a big thing. It can be a small thing. It's our first year doing anything on this 
event and we actually haven't produced our own little event. So, if, you know, if you just like want to do something that's not an event, but that's like represented something else, that's fine too. I just want to make sure we have time to think about it. If we do do an event or something we have to promote. So, um, Okay, we'll start with Benita. Let's go through the commission. Oh, okay. Uh, since um, I attended the Edmund School District DEIC event, um, I was able to go to College Place um, Elementary and help with their dental visit. Uh, the kindergarten fair was at Mount Lake Terrace High School on February 3rd. Um, I did sign waving for the at Edmund School District Bond and Lobby. And I went to the count the um, Snohomish County Auditor's Office and watched them do a batch audit where they have some volunteers sit at tables and count, sort the ballots to see if it matches the computer. Oh, interesting. And so they have independent mm -hmm. audit. And so that was really interesting. Um, and the Black History event, oh. uh, February 17th. Okay. And today I went down to Seattle and I hooked up with a postcarding party for Common Power who we partnered with for mm -hmm. uh, voter registration. registration. Yeah, so I ended up on their mailing list and I'm like, I can go to Seattle on this day for an hour. Um, yeah, so it was fun. Um, upcoming in April is the Step Up Leadership for Equity program, which probably many people will hear about because Mr. Woodard is Dr. Dr. Woodard? I got a right scheme. I kept a straight face too when I said that. Steve Woodard is doing the MC again for that. And so I'm sure I'll see all of that if you haven't already. <laughs> Um, well, I did the Black History event at the library also, and prior to that, nothing because <laughs> just nursing my hip, which is which is working. Yay! Yes. So, yeah, looking forward to doing more things. For the world. Okay, Black History and CPAG. Okay. Okay, and um, for Dr. King weekend, I'm um, never. And I got an opportunity to represent us as well as the city um, by participating in a couple of events, both on Saturday and Sunday, reading proclamations and speaking to um, Dr. King's legacy with, um, related to DEI. Um, and then marched in a parade, I mean, marched in that march with them. And then um, I also had the opportunity to meet with the Edmonds and then with DEI chairs and we just to form a a collaboration between three of us, our groups, you know, we're, we're going to be meeting going forward, meeting um, one earlier today, we was talking about, um, you know, I think you said, if we could get calendars together, you know, that's one of the things that that's our goal is to calendar of events so that, you know, we're not, you know, doing things all at the same time and can support one another, you know, with, with different things. You know, um, one of the things that Probably the biggest thing that I got out of that meeting, as I was telling Carolyn, was that, you know, Edmonds, they're going through this whole list of stuff that they got their name on. And then they said, but we don't put these events on, we just support them, you know, and that's just as good as paying for it, you know, and, and, and that was a big learn, you know, that, you know, we don't have to put on the events, you know, we can support them, we can participate in them, you know, we can help. You know, and, and 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 that puts us there. So that was that was that was a big letter. The diversity fair, obviously. Um, I also made contact at the diversity fair with um, the executive director of the Western African Center um, oh, yeah. in um, Paul Osman, and we're going. He's in Africa right now. When he gets back, we're going to get together and meet. And uh, because obviously we need to get just like you know the Muslim community, you know. Involved or, or involved with them, we got a big, huge Western African um, community, and he knows who they are, where they are, and um, and he has a lot to say about them and how um, they can help contribute to the well-being of the city of Mount Lake Terrace. So when he's back, you know, I'll be meeting with him, and and um, at our at, at our leisure, we will 
have him invite him as a group here to um to share his views and ideas on you know what what can be done. Okay. Great. I'm gonna turn it over to Council Member Murray now. Thank you, Chair Page. Um, I'm trying to keep it brief. Um, I think we've had yeah, lots of good opportunities to engage over the last couple of months in initiative for those. Um, I will note I went down to Seattle on um, part of the Hay Junior Day um, and helped out with an opportunity fair, um, and something I've done in the past as well. But um, they have a career fair essentially, but then also like opportunities for like resume review and um, interview, you know, coaching and those sorts of things. And I will say that's something like my HR community has plugged into for a number of years off and on. And I don't think we have anything similar up this way. So I think just if we are thinking about opportunities for partnership in future, um, you know, events, that might be an opportunity, I think, in the North End um, for us to, to think about or consider. Um, I have a request about a Juneteenth event from the library um, that they'd like to coordinate around, but I think um, Chair Page, you and I can maybe just talk briefly after the meeting about timing um, on that so we can get something on the calendar to discuss. Um, I have an outreach from Isaac Harrison, who is one of our planning commissioners, but who is also the library manager for the Bright Library. Mm -hmm. um, what I did want to, I'm trying to look through my notes if that wants to be, they can. Oh, what I did want to say, so your presentation to the council, I guess I wanted to say this. Um, you get to come in once a year, right? And we only hear from you once a year. And so while yes, I think, you know, many of our council members watch these meetings on a regular basis and I share an update, you know, every month about these meetings, um, they don't get to sit here in the same way that I do. And so I mean, I would encourage you to take that time. Like, I don't, you know, like that is your time and it is important time and it's important for us as council members to understand you know, the work that you have done and the accomplishments that you have made, as well as the things that you want to do, how that, you know, how we can support you. And so, I, I mean, I would just, it's important um, and it's it's valuable. I and, mean, you know, I think, you know, all of you attending, if you can, it's a, a great, you know, opportunity for them to see you and us to see you and, um, and hear from you. And so, I would just, that was, I guess, my only wanted to encourage you to not feel like you have to rush through that. Like, this is important work. It is important work to the council. It's why we created this commission, um, you know, and we, we want to learn. Um, and this is the opportunity really for the full council to, to learn. Um, and so I, I think that is, that is it for my updates, other than, I guess, we'll just circle back to, you know, it sounds like comprehensive plan updates. You may get any updates on that. Council will be hearing about some of those tomorrow. And so if you are curious how that conversation is going on our end, uh, I would encourage you to check that out. I have a question for you. Yeah. Were you reassigned to our group? Oh, I was. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> It's been so long since we've had a official <laughs> meeting. So yes, the first yeah. meeting in January, <laughs> way back um, right. many, many weeks ago, yes, we went yeah. through our, our new assignments for 2024. So yes, this is, I am here for at least the entire week. Okay, all right. Thank you for the question. Thank <laughs> you. I'm glad to be, it was my first choice. <laughs> so uh, the first time I had an offer, we do um, by seniority. So I don't get to choose first, but it was the first time I got to choose. Thank so, you. All right. Yeah. Thank Happy you. to be back. Happy to be okay. back. Mm -hmm. um, I have a couple things, but the most important thing is to pick your five fly. Oh, mm. and those were the most. There were some other options, but these were the most productive, like prominent ones. We have to order any flags. No. Who are we voting? So one, two, three, four. Five. Okay. I've chosen. One, two, three, four, five. So take a couple of five and see. And then we'll go around the room. Yeah. Which one? Me. Prefer. One, two, one, three, four, five. Start with it. Oh. Okay. Oh. I'm left handed, man. It always goes <laughs> out. You want to go first? Sit next to me. <laughs> You'll never see me go that way first. 
<laughs> I also like to. Yeah. One. And I like to. So two's got three votes. One's got one. Yes. So do I need to do we need to put a motion on the floor? What we want for right purpose? Or is this just a recommendation? It's just a okay. recommendation. All right. Um, let's see, just a couple of things I want you to know about. Um, figured out who the artist is on the corner with the mural on the house. You know, oh, that Native American. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's his website. His name is Andrew Morrison. Very yeah. interesting man. I haven't met him, but his website is pretty amazing. He has a lot of accolades. Um, so if you want to check that, there's a link. Um, that was the library. They're super interested in partnering. We have a DEI staff group with uh, several cities and nonprofits in the South County region and shoreline. And the library manager over here is interested in participating. Like that's how much they're like, yeah, we want to just we want to be there. So excited to kind of start um, making more connections in the region and figuring out how to collaborate very similar to what William was talking about. Um, William and I met with uh, Charles Patton mm -hmm. his last name, from um, PSRC yesterday. He's our their equity um, staff person, and that's that report I said, John. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Just interesting to learn about what they're doing more um, resources they have for the city. Um, William and I can talk more about that if you're interested. And lastly, I wanted you to know that I'm working on an internal policy to provide stipends to volunteers who um, related to community engagement. Um, and I've been circulating this for the past month and um, finally wrote, finished writing it and, and I've got it for review right now. So this would give us an opportunity as um, the comp plan outreach process um, picks up again and um, the beta agency is going out and meeting with different groups of people. So like if they want to form a focus group somewhere and the only, you know, we, people need compensation to do that, then we have an opportunity to do that. So um, those are those things. And then um, new business, I just want you to know, um, again, working on getting uh, Lita and OTAC here in March. Um, I also wanted to share with you some criteria that we'll present to council eventually um, to rank our capital projects, which would include an equity analysis. So I wanted to share that with you. Um, and hopefully we can talk about welcoming them a little more. But um, I know that Scott and others have been reaching out to folks in the community and heard you tonight, William, say, you know, there's another speaker we'd want to bring forward. Just wanted um, to bring speaker ideas or other ideas you have for agendas um, at this part of the meeting so we can plan appropriately and make sure we have enough time. So, and if, and if things come up or like in, in between our meetings, you know, and, and we have opportunity to, to reach out, let me, let me stop for a minute. Because I, I, if there's something that I wanted to say, and I said, I want to make sure I say it. I am like so proud of this group with your outreach that yeah. you've done. Mm -hmm. You have taken our mission statement and you've done, done some things with it that when we wrote it, didn't know if it could be possible. You know, and 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 what we saw for what we were going to be presenting on March 7th. So I hope you all are there because what it's this group is amazing. You know, and so much stuff happens between like tonight and the next meeting, you know, every month. And um, thank you. You know, um, when I was deciding to re-up, I was internally wishy-washy because I didn't know that we would be what we're doing right now. I didn't know that that we, we would be that strong. And we're just getting stronger because as you're learning, you got this hunger for learning and you got this hunger for understanding and you're using it to do what our mission statement has asked us to do. So, you know, I, I needed to say that. And I say that also because 
as things come up between now and the next meeting, if there's an engagement, you know, fire it off to Carolyn, you know, and she can share with all the rest of us so that we can be prepared when it comes time for the meeting to make decisions as to, you know, it might be four or five people that want to come, you know, we can only invite one, but we, we'll have that, we may even have that opportunity before the meeting to make that decision as to who we want, you know, that way, uh, you know, we all stay on task and, 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 and we, 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 we're, we're focused on, you know, I think that, you know, with Charles, one of the things that we talked about was, you know, that move and, and the same thing with Louis, you know, that, that progression, you know, moving in a, in a progression. And, and I think that, you know, as we bring in speakers and people that come in to help us, it should be a progression of speakers that are leading us to a goal and not just, you know, bringing in speakers, bang, 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 you know, that kind of like maybe just could potentially disorient us. You know, so so we, we have a as we work our plan, you know, we try to build speakers into that plan to help develop us and help the community. Okay. But thank you. That made me feel good. Given that, are there any more speakers or topics that you have, whether it's March or um, upcoming meetings shortly after? Uh I I think I did I pass on the information about the person that's in charge of the um the local american native american parents group um, i'll have to look i that's spoke to you not... about this yeah 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 and i also just wanted to make sure that like we that the ideas among the group and that we're all in agreement that that's um how we want to use our time. So, right. yeah. Um, no offense to anyone's opinion. It's just that <laughs> we're a commission and we have to work together. So, um, I will look for the email. And can you tell us what they would talk about or what? Your uh, it was in regard to uh, Native American. Is there a month? Uh, where we celebrate like November or something mm -hmm. like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So this would be um, someone who could uh, help us uh, design our celebration or, or have some input. Uh -huh. Something for organizing for that month. Yeah. And maybe help us understand our local Native American community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's. Uh, Okay. Um, you know, someone like that might be also uh, could be helpful with the library, you know, wanting to get more involved, you know, yeah. activities and things, you know, to Indian education yeah. parent Yeah. Oh, is that through um Edmonds School District? Um might be. Because remember but, Dr. Boozman um told us there was a group and she said it was Indian something and she's mm -hmm. like I didn't pick the name or whatever. Do you right. remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, who's the, who's there the I met them out here at the high school. Okay. Who who's the person? Jen. Oh, and Jen okay. Herman. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know Jen. Okay. <laughs> All right. Is there a support to in the next two or three months? Yeah. I, that yeah. person coming? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, again, like I said, it might be an opportunity to, you know, we're talking about the library folks. To, um, I mean, they're probably going to try to do something during that month for Native American Month. Yes, I have shared, we've shared um, calendars and I've merged them mm -hmm. so we know when to collaborate yes, right. and help share. Sure, so, sure. Yeah. You know, the other thing that we have to do, and I was thinking about this a lot today, is um, we need to try to collaborate more with the Arts Commission. You know, we got to, we have to, you know, they're doing things unbeknownst to us, we're doing things unbeknownst to them, and a lot of it's the same thing, or could be the same thing. So I am going to reach out to them, and, um, and we have talked, we talked last year, there's never been any 
sticking budget talk. So it was a really great conversation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. is, is your idea to attend one of their meetings? Yeah, or, as a starter. Or do you yeah. want to have like a joint meeting? I, I think I'm going to talk to you know the chairs first, and then ask them. I think that I think it'd be a combination. You know, a you know, joint meeting, attend their meeting, find out. You know, there's no point in having them here if we're not going to be talking about stuff, you know, just, we don't need eyes. We just need voices and ears, you know? So, um, so I, I mean, talk to them and, you know, see what they're working on, especially since they're going to be presenting probably the same day we're mm -hmm. presenting. Yeah. So we'll have a good opportunity to, to sit and say, Hey, you know, let's do this. Okay. Sounds good. There is something else. Um, when you were talking about libraries, it reminded me that this Saturday from 11 to 2, the Black Lives Matter Month of Action at Edmonds School District is hosting an event, the Edmonds Library, um, and our logo. Yeah, I'm doing the 12 o'clock. Yeah. And I think um, that the husband just sent me an email. Yeah. And um, I think um, 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 Steve, Dr. Wood, it is. Yeah. He's, he's <laughs> meeting also. Actually, this is my third year, I think, doing it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the one that we did. Yeah, yeah, it is. I won't be there this year because um, my Girl Scout troop is hosting pregnant derby um, during that exact know. time. Look for that social post and okay. send it to all of you. Um, okay. All right. Because this is a promoting other people's good work and joining us. Absolutely. Get our local ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Um, with that, I think any other comments? When we meet, it'll be the end of it, but March is Women's History Month, and Breast Cup Cookies start on March 1st. So if you'd like to support your local entrepreneurs, you'll see them out in full force in grocery stores I March 1st. I just bought some cookies. You might? Didn't I just buy some cookies? Probably. They're probably pre-purchased. Pre oh. They'll be, they'll be <laughs> in front of the grocery stores. Yeah. All right. Now make a motion to close the meeting. I motion to close the meeting. Close the meeting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Boom. All in favor? Yeah, we had a lot on the agenda today, and we got yeah. it done only like 17 yeah. minutes after. So um, I'm best impressed. Yes, thank you all for staying a little late. It's yeah, and that's yeah, 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 so she's been around. Oh, we yeah. know the other guy. I haven't been over there yet. Yeah, good to see you guys. Yeah. 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 Can I ask mm -hmm. you about yeah. what progress with your video? Oh, I just need the pom pom now. Where are we? But I don't like doing this. So I get one of my girls together and work together to make that. So cute. Is it mini? No, it's crocheting. Yeah, it's crocheting, but it's a garter stitch, so it looks like knitting. Oh, it's knitting. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Let's just knitting in the background. Okay. Okay. Well, but, yeah, very pretty. Awesome. Were you working on that Saturday too? Uh, that was different color. color. That was that, yeah. the same thing. That was a different right. color. But yeah, yeah. similar. Yeah. 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 Oh, thank you guys. Yeah. 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 Yeah.